Welcome back to EcoStress Tutorials. This tutorial will teach you how to download EcoStress data from Earth Data Search on Mac OS. Let's start by searching the web for Earth Data Search. And clicking on this first link. Once we're in the Earth Data Search page, make sure you go up here and select Earth Data Login. This will take you to the Earth Data Login page. You can fill out your credentials and then press Login. Now that we're back in the Earth Data Search page, let's look at our panels. The leftmost panel is where you can set preferences to search for your data. Whatever preferences you set in this panel will change the results that are shown in this middle panel. Let's look at a few ways we can set preferences. First, at the top, you can search for specific collections or topics. For example, if I'm interested in soil temperature, I can type that in, and it will display all the options I have. In order to clear this search, let's press this eraser icon. Next is the calendar icon. If you click on this, you can set a temporal resolution by selecting a start and end date. Once you have these filled out, you can click Apply. You'll see here a new temporal resolution will show up. It also will change what is shown in the middle panel. For now, let's remove this. Next, we can set a spatial filter. If you select this crop icon, you can see all the options you have available. If you click this file option, a pop-up will appear and you can browse your files for an upload. This is helpful if you have a GeoJSON or a shapefile that you would like to upload to filter your data. Alternatively, you can select one of these options and draw directly on the map. For example, if I'm interested in this area, I can select rectangle and then draw a rectangle here. You'll see here the spatial resolution will show up and you can alter the vertices. For now, I'm gonna remove this. Finally, you have this advanced search option. If you open this, you can search for Huck IDs if that's something you're interested in. If not, just press cancel. Down here, we can filter for collections. To practice searching for EcoStress data, let's do a practice example. For this example, we're going to leave the temporal filter blank, but we're going to set a spatial filter. First, let's zoom in to Salton Sea, which is in Southern California. Now I'm going to select this, spatial filter, and then select rectangle. I'm going to draw a rectangle around the Salton Sea. Next, let's look at this filter collections box. This box allows you to select preferences for your search based off of different criteria in different categories, including keywords, projects, data format, and more. If you're interested in using a variety of NASA's Earth Data products, I encourage you to explore your different options here. To find EcoStress data, select Projects, scroll down, and select EcoStress. Once you collapse the projects, you'll see it says one selected. You can also filter the EcoStress data by data format. If you click this dropdown, you'll see the two options. If you're interested in HDF, you can click this on. However, most people are interested in GeoTIFFs, so I'm going to select that. Now, in the center panel, you'll see a list of all EcoStress collections with a GeoTIFF data type. You can scroll through the different options to see what is available. If you hover your mouse over an option, you'll see two icons appear. This first one you can click on to get information about this product. The green plus icon can be used to add the entire collection to a current project. This is if you want to download the entire collection. However, that's a lot of data, so I'm not going to select that one yet. 
For now, I'm just going to click on the name of this first option. Once you click on that collection, the middle panel will now display the granules available in that collection that align with your search parameters. You'll also see a timeline at the bottom of the screen which you can use to set a temporal resolution. This is an alternative to using the calendar icon that I showed you before. To set a temporal resolution using the timeline, first select what units you would like. You can choose year, month, or day. For now, I'm going to choose year. Now, hold your mouse in this dark gray area above the timeline and click and drag. This red filter will be placed over the times that you selected. If you want to adjust the filter, hover over one of the ends and drag it. For now, I'm going to set it to the end of 2023. Now let's investigate the granules available. If it's helpful, you can sort it by start date or end date being oldest or newest. Alternatively, you can choose how you view it, either in a table or a list. If you hover your mouse over one of the granules, you will see that on the map it will also be highlighted here. And alternatively, if you move over the map, you'll see a granule highlighted in the middle pane. This will let you know where the granule is located based off your spatial filter. In the box with the granule description, there are a few more ways you can interact with it. First, if you click on this icon, you can download the single granule. This is helpful if you want just a small amount of data to test with. Alternatively, you can click this plus to add to the project to be downloaded later. Also, if you click these three dots, you'll get two options. The first will give you details and metadata about the granule, and the second one will remove the granule from your search. For this example, let's download some data from December 29th, 2023. I'm going to click this green plus icon next to all the images with that date. You will see I clicked the plus 10 times. And now under this download option, you'll see a folder that says 10. Go ahead and click on this button. This will take you to the download window. Here you can name your project. Naming your project is helpful because it saves it for later. If you're interested in viewing it again, you can select your icon here and then select Save Projects. From there, you can revisit the download or share it with others. The center pane of the download window is where you set edit options. Depending on the product you are downloading, there may be more options available. However, for this example, we're just going to keep the default options. Now, press this green Download Data option. Finally, this will take you to the Download Status page, where you can track your orders being processed. Once this is complete, you'll have two options to download the files on your computer. One option is to download the files directly from the links provided. This will require you to click on each link, and sometimes even specify a download location. This can be tedious if you have many files you want to download, but helpful if you just want to look at a few for an example. The other option is to use the download script to download all the files at once. To do this, click on download script and start by saving it to your computer. Now, if I open Finder and go to the downloads folder, I will see the downloaded script. Now I'm going to right click and press new folder and name it. I'm going to move this downloaded code into the folder. This is good practice because your downloaded files will save to the same location where your script is. This way we can make sure all our files are saved into this folder. 
Next, let's open the terminal by clicking this magnifying glass icon and typing in terminal. In the terminal, we need to connect to the folder that contains the saved script. To do this, type cd space followed by the path to your folder. The easiest way to do this is to drag and drop your folder into this window. Once the path is there, press enter to run. Next, type chmod space 777 into the terminal, followed by the name of the script file you downloaded. The script file is usually named something ending in download.sh. Now press enter to run it. Now type dot forward slash followed by the name of the file and press enter to run it. The terminal will now prompt you to enter your Earth Data login credentials. Start by typing in your username and pressing return. Next, enter your password. Remember, the terminal does not display the characters as you type for security reasons, but once you're done, you can press enter to run it. Let your code finish running. Make sure to check your finder to make sure that the files have populated correctly. One last tip. If you want to know what each of these files mean, let's search ecostress naming conventions and click on this ecostress overview link. If you scroll down, you'll see this section called ecostress naming conventions, which will explain what each part of the name is referencing. Now you know how to download ecostress data from Earth Data Search. Thank you for watching this ecostress tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. For more trainings, tutorials, and information, including a written version of this tutorial, go to ecostress.jpl.nasa.gov documents, which will be linked in the description.